Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. There is a little bit of an occasion coming up in a couple of weeks. On around September the 25th of last year, we actually had a change of hands on the Forge Alliance Forever client. I know a lot of you guys were around for that little bit of drama that took place. Um, basically, what it boils down to is Pilot had been handling the project somewhat on his own for about three years, got burnt out on it, decided that he didn't want to do it anymore, and shut down the server. And at that point, um, the server and all of the assets that were being held at that time were acquired by Viznik. And I'm going to have a link in the description to the original video that I did on that. I had an interview with Viznik um, where we just talked about his plans for the server, where things were headed, and uh, just a little bit about the community and what he thought about it. I actually have him on again today to celebrate the one year, Mark. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? I'm doing fantastically well. And... To be honest with you, playing about as many hours as I was back then. <laughs> yeah. well, that sounds like it's about as many as I've gotten to play. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, obviously it's been one year, and the server is still up and ticking, so I guess we can consider it a glorious success as far as uh, getting the server back online is concerned. At that time, we kind of talked just a little bit about, I know you're a huge RTS fan. You mentioned that you've been playing back since the Genesis days in the RTS genre. Um, basically, FA is one of your favorite ones and you wanted to keep it online. I think you phrased it, you invested in FAF for a profit of fun. And yep. so that's my first and most important question is, has that panned out for you? Yeah, I haven't gotten to play as much, especially since um, about the middle of the year as I would have liked to. But uh, no, it's been great fun and it's still about the only game I'm playing. I think there's a lot of people around that can say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, you know, everybody, almost everybody that I talk to is really passionate about the game and a lot of people would love to play more. But, you know, when you think about when Supreme Commander first came out and sort of the age demographic that was centered around its release, you know, lots of people are starting to become 30 something first kid having a family so it's kind of an interesting midlife for for forged alliance it is a very interesting dynamic in the community because the feel that i get of it um the majority of the players seem to be between 20 and about 35 which is actually a fairly old age group for any video game community so it yeah absolutely yeah and i can agree with you on that one because i know i'm quite a bit younger than you are, but it seems like the more I move into adult life, the less time I have for games, and since I enjoy FA the most, it ends up being just about the only one that I play. Yeah, I mean, we've got a, a lot of great younger players as well, but, you know, it's just interesting, but I think Supreme Commander first came out in 2007 or something like that, if I remember right. Um, so, you know, it's been eight years since... Uh, it might have been Forged Alliance that actually came out in 2007, it, you know, but it's been eight, nine, ten years since it came out. It's amazing that this many people are still playing, and yeah, I think it does tend to skew the demographic to older. You know, you don't see a lot of younger kids playing. Although, my son, who is a big Minecraft uh, fan right now, comes <laughs> in and watches a lot. And he's like, "So, how do you play that?" And I'm like, "Oh, maybe, maybe in a couple of years. It's a little bit complicated right now, but he's definitely interested in it." My question would be, do the younger kids have the attention span <laughs> for Forged yeah. Alliance? Yeah, I, I, who knows? I, a lot of them may not, but I'm not sure I have the attention span, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get 45 minutes in and you're like, holy cow, when is this going to end? Yeah. Um, so back then, um, I think the only clear goal that you had in at, at the start anyway was to get the reins of the community turned over to the community as much as possible. And I know we've had the formation of the council. A lot of the decision making has seemed to move away from you a little bit. You're you're the administrator and you own it, but honestly, we don't see we don't see your fingers directly in a lot of things. I'd like to get your thoughts on exactly how you see the community, how well you think it's working under this type of leadership, and just kind of, you know, from a from a bird's eye view, standing back from it, uh, your observations on how things are running right now. Yeah, as you mentioned, my plan from the beginning was to get community leadership in place, both because I thought it was going to be a more healthy way to move forward, but also because I knew that I couldn't consistently be around. You know, um, my work is really, really bursty. Sometimes I don't have anything to do for months, and then sometimes I have to work, you know, 18, 19 hours a day yes. uh, for months. And, and that's what happened, for example, this year. So 
I had a company that I wasn't expecting at all was going to sell. We had a an offer to buy the company, and so I ended up spending about six months this year really focused on the sale of that company, and you know didn't get to play as much. But the good news is that we did get the, most of the council in place, and so you know even though I was absent, everything just kept on rolling. You know we, we've got almost 50 people. Um, that are really actively volunteering and helping with the community at this point between moderators, developers, um, artists, all, all kinds of folks, you know, folks making new clients, just tons. I mean, a much, much larger core group than what we had before. I mean, the, it was amazing and awesome that uh, Zep put in as much work as he did to get Forge Alliance Forever to where it was. Um, but, you know, clearly just very, very hard to sustain as a one-person show, and I, I knew I could do that. I have no idea how he was doing it, honestly. I don't know how he made it three it, years before he burned out. <laughs> it, it's an um, unbelievable amount of work. I mean, even still today, you know, I'm not seeing as much around uh, in the client, but, you know, I'm talking constantly with the developers and moderators and other folks. Every every day I'm talking with them. It's an amazing amount of work. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it, you know, even though I had to go unexpectedly and, and get that company sold, um, everything just moved on. Servers stayed up. You know, community kept being moderated. You know, game kept uh, development ongoing, kept improving. So I'm really happy with the results, and it's pretty much exactly what I wanted in terms of how the community would lead itself. Good deal. Um, that's actually kind of leading into one of the things that I wanted to ask about. Um, there's a couple of things that I get asked consistently because, you know, with the videos going up, people – people tend to ask a lot of questions about the client itself due to that. And one of the questions that I get consistently is, is Galactic War coming back? And before we answer that, just a little lead into this, I have actually talked to, I believe Shio is essentially what you would call kind of a head developer yep. for this. He's taking point on it. And um, there, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, and I know there's some people that are a little bit impatient to get back some of the features that Pilot had, and just as a brief, brief explanation of that, I know when I talked to Shio, his, uh, his comment on it was that the underlying structure of the client was not up to speed. So basically, all the work over the last year has been the underpinnings of the client, the code being changed and everything becoming more stable. I just wanted to get your thoughts on, first of all, what you see has been accomplished over the last year and then what you see over the next year happening as far as features returning and advancements being made. Yeah, sure. So like I was saying before, I mean, I'm eternally thankful for what Zep did and it, it was an amazing amount of work for one person to do in the period that he did. But like any project, I mean, my company is always after, you know, our software is three, four, five years old. We'd look back at the software and say, geez, you know, we wish we hadn't have written this part this way. We wish we had made a different design decision for some of the software. And so especially when we had a new team coming in that, you know, wasn't as familiar with the code as Zep was, we looked at the code that was in place and we said, you know, there's, there's some stuff that we want to change. There's some stuff that we want to improve. The, sort of the foundation of the house had to be rebuilt a bit. And... It was interesting because it really is not only the ZEP Foundation, it also goes back to the GPG Foundation, and, yes. and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. When I got involved and you know had a chance to start bringing developers on, and you know I have a development history myself, started looking through the code, started looking at where things were failing the most often. You know what we saw was that um, first off, I think of. FAF has three parts. There's the client that everybody interacts with, you know, to start games and to chat, etc. Um, there's the FIF, you know, the Forge Alliance engine itself, including all the what's called Lua code, which actually runs the game. Uh, and then there's a server that sits behind the client. And, you know, people don't really see that server at all, but it's back there and the client is talking to that server in order to get everything done. And when we looked at those three pieces, what we saw was when it came to reliability and when it came to sort of problems and expense, the biggest issue was the server. And so there's been a lot of work behind the scenes on both getting new hardware for the server. That was one of the first things that I did. Yes. Um, and then also cleaning up some of the server code. You know, we had the, the, the server is actually comprised of about eight different programs that run on Linux and they work together to provide all the services that the client and that Forge Alliance and FAF use. And some of the services were working just fine. Some of them would have problems, and they need they would need to be restarted, 
you know, every week or two. And so we really wanted to clean that up. So we did a lot of that work behind the scenes, getting the servers kind of cleaned up a little bit and then focusing on what we were going to do long term. Um, there's a ton of work that's gone into that. The other thing that we really started working on was, you know, in FAF itself, you know, how you do mods. And, and really, Forgelands Forever itself is a mod. I mean, it's a modification to what GPG delivered. And the, the challenge that we've run into is that, you know, GPG really wasn't thinking of all of the things that we as a community have invented to do yes. <laughs> with mods and extensions <laughs> and new capabilities. Um, and a lot of the mods really, not out of a lack of skill, but out of a lack of ne or out of a need of necessity, were really hacks to make the game do things that it was never designed to do. So we also stepped back and looked at that. We said, okay, what are we going to do to clean up some of the code, the Lua code in the game itself, to make it easier to maintain, to make it easier to improve? You know, we were running into a lot of bugs where, like, a unit wouldn't work a certain way, and then we'd fix it, and then a different unit wouldn't work, and it was because it had a completely different set of code for that unit, even though 90% of the stuff was the same as the unit we fixed previously. So we've done a lot of work to reduce the amount of code. In fact, I think I heard one statistic that um, almost half of the lines of code are gone. I mean, it's been condensed. It's been optimized. I had heard that too, yes. So, yeah, so there's been a ton of work, not actually in the quote-unquote client itself, but kind of on the left and right of the client, you know, on the server, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and then on the on the Lua code that goes into the FF, FAF engine itself. Um we have a, a very significantly improved server that's coming um, that uses some new technology for proxying um, you know the, the packets when you're using a proxy server also has a streamlined architecture it has a, a clean uh, web-based API so that other clients can be developed and you know you may I'm sure you're probably aware downloard is actually developing a new client yes and so we've been working with him on this clean API so that's easy for anybody to make new clients for the for the server so anyway yeah a lot of behind the scenes stuff a lot of cleanup work a lot of stuff to make it much easier for things to improve for new modifications to happen in the future that was one of the things that I had observed just as an end user because essentially I am a user I, I play on FAF I use it just about every day and I've noticed a lot of times you know once you once you cross a dividing line looking back you see things as the good old days and I've heard people talking recently about oh the good old days when there weren't so many bugs and from my observations from the time right before Zep stopped handling the server to now there hasn't been a lot of changes as far as functionality goes, but the stability of the server is so vastly improved. I mean, I, I can go back and look at my logs from that time period and the server was going down um, probably every four to five days and then right. it would have to be restarted in the morning. I have those logs. That was back when I was moderating, and that was a whole huge issue because the whole chat would shut down. The games would stop working. It was a nightmare. And I think we've had the client up consistently for several months now without any significant crashes. Um, and everything just seems to be turning so much more smoothly. It's obvious that work is being done. But I think people kind of lose the frame of reference when there's not big changes going on that they can see it the little bugs matter more because that's what you see when there's not huge things happening <laughs> right and then you know when there's not apparent progress being made sometimes people get a little frustrated that's one of the reasons i wanted to have this little chat it's just to let people know that there's definitely things going on there's huge advancements being made um it's just not right there where you can see it yeah and the number one issue that i wanted to work on was stability you know when i when I when I stepped in and I started talking with some of the early folks that you know are in this group of about 50 people that are actively working on it, I said my number one goal is to make the game more fun. And I also contested that personally and fundamentally, the 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 least fun thing about the game was when the game would crash or freeze or lock up or the client would go down and everything would halt. And so I said, you know, the biggest thing I think we can do to make the game more fun is make it so that the games die less often. Yes. <laughs> um, and I, I do think that we've come a long way in that regard. I mean, I actually don't think I have had a game freeze on me or die on me in a couple months now. 
Um, whereas before, you know, I'd have a game that froze up at least a couple times a week. Um, so I think that that has been huge, and, and that has been the primary focus in the development side of what we've been doing with the project. You know, part of the problem, though, is uh, it is behind the scenes, but on the other hand, also, it's changing a lot of the fundamentals, and some of those fundamentals have led to, to new new bugs. Like I mentioned, we're really cleaning up a lot of stuff, even that was GPG stuff. Yes. Um, you know, there was no quote-unquote architecture, really, for mods, and as I said, a lot of mods really had to be hacked because of that, and then when you would load multiple mods, they would interfere with each other and cause all kinds of problems. Also, the biggest challenge every time we come up with a new, you know, uh, patch for the game, like improving units or trying to improve the the lobby inside the game itself, is that we break these third-party mods that other people wrote. And, and we don't break them intentionally. It's just that there wasn't clean APIs. There weren't clean ways for mods to do things. And so people would just figure out a way to sort of hack the code that was there. And then whenever we change it, stuff would naturally break. So, you know, we're, we're starting to put in place an architecture for that and what we hope is going to be a much better system that's going to let people make mods in a much cleaner way than they could before and you know it's, it's kind of like remodeling a house it's like before the house looks much better you kind of, you make a mess right you like demo yes. walls and there, you know there's drywall dust everywhere and uh, we're, we're kind of in that stage behind the scenes so I, I think that over the next couple months we're going to see a lot of that settle down and you know this had sort of started with you asking you know, are we going to bring back Galactic War? And the, the short answer is yes, I want to bring it back. Um, we're pretty much going to have to rewrite it um, for the new architecture that we've been putting in place over the last year. But, you know, everyone I've talked to, development side, user side, moderator side, everybody wants to bring it back. So it's absolutely one of our goals. Now, when will it be back? You know, I'm hoping that that will be sometime in the next 12 months. I can't say for sure yet. Uh, but what I'm encouraged by is that we have more and more active developers that are helping us on the project. And, you know, the more people that help, the faster those things can be, be achieved. That is a huge point of emphasis because I know it, a year ago when we did this video, um, I, that was one of the things that we stressed was getting people on board, getting people in the forums. And those links are going to be in the description again, a link to the forums, a link to the discussions on this type of thing. And I know you said we've got about 50 people on board helping out with the project now compared to maybe two or three a year yeah. ago. And that's made so much of a difference. But just to touch on a couple of points that people ask me about all the time, and now you've got an answer to it. People ask about nomads. Um, people ask about galactic war. Those are the two biggest ones. And then I've had a lot of people ask about two versus two matchmaking and a couple of the broken mods. And the biggest thing there is advancement is as fast as people can do it. So if you have more people helping, and I know right now one of the biggest problems with nomads is actually on the graphic side of things, um, not the mod itself. There's just a lot of placeholder units, so it's not polished. Um, right. The more people help, the more we have talents come in, the faster this is going to go and the better the end product is going to be. So that's yeah. just something to keep in mind. Maybe maybe help out a little bit if you've got a little experience or even if you're just learning. There's a lot of people who are willing to help anyone who has the time to just dip a toe into it and give it a shot. Uh, absolutely. I mean, again, we've had some great people that have volunteered and joined on the you know the community side of developing and progressing <clears throat> FAF in the last year, but we definitely can use more people. Like w one of the biggest challenges with Nomads specifically, and you have to forgive me, I'm not as familiar with Nomads as I'd like to be. Um, but you know I've talked with you and some of the co a couple other folks about it. And one of the challenges with Nomads has been um, that some of the people that originally started it aren't around. You know some people have made some attempts to sort of get it going, take it back over again. And at the same time, as I mentioned, we're changing the way mods are done to make a cleaner architecture so that you don't have to hack things so much. And at the intersection of all that, you know, it's been real challenging to move nomads forward. So, you know, people want nomads back. The absolute biggest thing is to figure out some more people that can help develop nomads. Yes, absolutely. And hopefully this will all be a steam, like a, a snowball effect, because once the underpinnings are corrected, once everything is set up, any advancements from here on will more easily transition to future versions of the client. You're not going to have so much backtracking work and bug fixing. So 
Yeah. Right. This last year, I know things get bogged down horrifically on the back end, but hopefully things are starting to get a little more straight back there and we'll be able to move forward at a little bit quicker pace with what people can readily see in yep. the next 12 months. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things is um, having Zoc on board, uh, you know, as the balance counselor and starting to work on patches. I mean, that was a pretty recent development, right? If you think about it, that was just a couple months ago. And so we went for, you know, about nine months without anybody to really work on balance, work on units. Um, you know, we've come out with a couple of patches since then, and uh, I think that things are heading in a good direction. You know, we've had more problems than we had back in the ZEP days with some of those patches. But, you know, somebody reminded me the other day that sort of almost every patch in the ZEP era was immediately followed up with another patch that fixed something. <laughs> Eight to 24 hours later, like right. clockwork. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and again, you know, we're learning. So we've got people who are newer to this and haven't done it as much. But, you know, I definitely think that you're going to see a lot more. Well, I know you are. It's not just that I think you are. You're going to see a lot more visible improvements to the game over the next 12 months now that that foundation has been dramatically improved. That is fantastic to hear. I think that's all the technical questions that I have. Um, I just had a couple of personal opinion things. Um, what is the best thing that you've observed over the last year? As, as far as the community goes, having a more active role in it, being able to see pretty much everything that's going on, what is the best thing and what is maybe the most frustrating thing that you've dealt with in the last year? Um... I think the most frustrating thing has been that there were some people that did help out back in the ZEP days that, uh, you know, weren't as comfortable with the development model that I wanted to use moving forward. Um, there's this great sort of article essay called The Cathedral and the Bazaar um, by Eric Raymond, and it's about different open source development methodologies. And essentially, the cathedral model is... Um, I don't want to say it's exactly what we had with Zep, but it, it was sort of similar in that, the, you know, the development was very centralized. It was sort of like the, you know, a, a one person that was in charge and kind of a couple of, you know, bishops or you know other guys that were also working on it, but not a really widespread group. Yes. And, you know, what the Cathedral and the Bazaar, or what's called CatB for short, um, talks about is that in in open source. Oftentimes, instead of the cathedral model, the bazaar model works better, where you just kind of have this, you know, big market and lots of people and selling whatever they want, and it's there's almost like an intentional element of chaos to it. You know, I I wrote one of the first device drivers for Linux a long, long time ago, and I remember when I did it, you know, there were like a hundred people working on Linux. Right now, I mean, there must be like you know thousands or over ten thousand people working on Linux. Yes. Um, <laughs> And it's because Linux really followed the bazaar model. It, it it didn't have sort of a pope that led everything. Anybody could contribute anything anytime they wanted. A developer could scratch an itch. If they didn't like something about the way things worked, they could just say, hey, well, I'm just going to go build this new thing. And I think the greatest example of that has been the download client, right? Like nobody contacted him and said, hey, will you write a new client for us? We just heard from him one day, and he said, you know, I haven't liked how the current client works, so I'm going to write this new one. And I thought, I said, this is great, phenomenal. It's exactly what I want. I don't want everything to be directed. I want people to say, we want better clients, we want Nomads approved, and to have them join in and contribute whatever they can. So, you know, that I think has been the best thing about the change, and that's what I think what's led to having, you know, 50 people plus actively working on it. But then the thing that I didn't like that was that, you know, some people just weren't happy with that. They couldn't adapt to it. And so, you know, we did lo lose some folks. I wish that we could have kept, but in the long run, you know, I think we had to go in this direction. Yes. I, I can see how that would work because basically you have a lot of different people approaching the same problem from a lot of different angles. And then once you have the end products to choose from, you can pretty much see what works and what doesn't and then incorporate what does. So that does make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. And if you're interested, just Google the cathedral and the Bazaar, or, or Google Eric Raymond, Eric S. Raymond, uh, and you can read that essay. It's been translated to like 20 different languages. <laughs> um, and it really kind of explains philosophically how I wanted this community to come together and how I wanted the development of FAF to proceed. Okay. My other question would be, are you glad that you did this? A year later, looking back over everything that's happened, 
are you okay with how it's turned out and would you make the same choice again knowing that you now what or knowing then what you know now oh yeah absolutely i mean like i said i i I, it was an investment in fun. I, I wanted to keep playing the game. I wasn't looking to make any kind of profit off of it. Um, and that has definitely happened. In addition, I've met some phenomenal people over the last year in the community that, you know, when I was just sort of a, a guy on the chat you know, named Vishonic, I, I never really would have had the opportunity to meet. Um, you know, there's some unbelievably talented people, unbelievably smart people, unbelievably creative people that are involved in this game in one way or another. And, you know, it's been really fortunate for me because I've just been able to sit back and have these have a lot of these folks come and chat with me and talk with me. And I've gotten to know that know them. And I've really, really enjoyed that. So, you know, absolutely. It was worth the fun investment. But then also, you know, I've made some good friendships and some good relationships, which I really value. That is fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and doing this with us. I know everybody's gotten a little bit out of this chat. There was a lot of information there. And just thank you, thank you on behalf of the community for coming back on. Absolutely. And, you know, the the big thing this year that um, we're going to do is once the game gets stable enough, we're going to do a, a very sizable contest um, where I'm going to put up, you know, about $15,000 in prize money. And the, I mean, honestly, the sort of selfish underlying goal in that is to try to get a lot of the old players back. Yes. People have asked me, you know, like, <laughs> how are we going to get all the old players back that either went away before Zap or went away since then because they didn't like what we've done or things haven't changed enough. And I said, you know, I've said for like nine months now, we're just going to have a big old contest with a lot of prizes and encourage as many of those folks to come back and enjoy the game and hopefully stick with it moving forward. That is fantastic. Any final words for the community? Anything you want them to hear? No, nope. keep playing and you know, I'm available. Um, anytime you see me on, on the client on IRC, feel free to chat me up. Feel free to send me a message in the forum. I try to be as accessible as I can. I haven't done a great job, honestly, on the forum messages. Uh, and as a side, I hate the forum software we use. It's a giant pain in the butt to manage. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Something else is um, going to be changed at some point. Yeah. Well, you know, the problem is we've got so much content in it. We've got so many messages in it. We've got so much other stuff to do that it's sort of like, listen, Vijanik, you're just going to have to deal with the fact you don't like it. We're not gonna, we don't have the time oh, to change okay. it right now. But, um, yeah, I mean, hit me up if you guys have any questions anytime. I try to be as open and accessible as I can be. All right. Well, thanks again, and I guess we'll see you around the client. Great. All right. Bye.